that's in the description, you'll have access to this free bunch of goodies. There is no need to provide an email address, no need to like or subscribe, it's just some free goodies. There will be a color palette, a sketch that we're working on today. Actually, you can draw this sketch with me. Also, a free Procreate shader brush, as well as some watercolor paper. So I've loaded the watercolor paper into Procreate already, and I also loaded up a little reference porcupine for us. When you load your watercolor paper, make that your top layer and set it to multiply so all the layers underneath will let those little wonderful details show through. So let's begin. I'm going to start using the little pine brush for sketching. It's in the drawing section of your Procreate brush library. And just to start sketching, you can use um, a darker color. I have like a dark brown. It's not on our color palette. I just, just like to have the sketch a little bit darker. Now I'm going to be making kind of like a rounded potato shape. And it does not have to be perfect. Um, now we're going to kind of make little ears at the top of our porcupine. Kind of just make them almost in the same shape as our potato body. And at the bottom, making similarly shaped feet. And in the middle, toward the middle, a little bit longer, but similarly shaped stubby arms. I actually think that these arms are too high up that I made so I can either erase and redraw them or I can go up to my selection tool and bring them down a little bit further apart. So I'll do that. I'll be lazy and I'll do that. <laughs> now I'll go make a new layer above that and I'm going to make a little reference for myself. This will be um, taken away later and I'm just drawing the bottom of where I think my face would be and the middle of where I think my face would be. I'm just making that quick reference layer and I'll even bring the opacity on that down and clicking above that to make the actual face. So my eyes I want to remember to keep them wide spaced and low because that is a good way to ensure that my porcupine is cute. Big, wide spaced, low eyes are a cute little feature on animals. And for the nose, I'm just kind of like going to sketch a little bit of a mound here and the same kind of mound uh, inversed on the bottom and a little itty bitty oval in the middle. Now go back to my ears and make kind of like almost the exact same shape but smaller on the inside. Now when I go to do my quills, I most definitely need to keep them on a separate layer and I will show you why later but that is very important so even when we merge all of our porcupine features together I'm going to keep the quills on a separate layer um, so now I'm going to take away the reference layer completely and going back to the eyes and nose I kind of think Oops, I included the ears on that too. So I'm going to use my selection tool and just only um, circle the eyes and nose. I still kind of think they're a little bit too high. So I'm just going to move them down a little bit. And I think that's good. I'm going to move this eye over just a little bit. And this is, of course, personal preference. So right now it does look like a bear because it doesn't have quills, and we will fix that. Um, so let's go ahead and merge the layers we have. 
that are um, our porcupine. And now I'm going to kind of um, minimize the shape, bring it down a little bit, give me a little more room for the quills. But as I said earlier, I'm going to make a new layer for the quills. If you hear snoring, that's my Boston Terrier. <laughs> So forgive me for that. She's, she makes so much noise all the time. Okay, the quills are going to be so simple to make. They're just going to be little lines that I'm still on my um, little pine brush. I'm just going to draw lines coming from the uh, potato-shaped body and out as far as I want. And it doesn't have to take a long time because we can copy this, uh, this quill layer and we can paste it to the other side. So it, if you only wanted to do, for instance, like a quarter of this, you could stop here and then just copy and paste the others. But I think I want um, not to have that, it, that so much symmetry. So I'm going to do about half of... Uh, my porcupine of the quills and even after I add color I'm still going to keep these quills separate on a separate layer until the very 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 end okay a um, little more here so as I said before I'll copy the quill layer duplicate going to my arrow selection button, and at the bottom, you can flip it. I'm flipping horizontally and dragging it over. Now, obviously, it's not symmetrical because <laughs> those quills are way off of the, off of the uh, porcupine's body, so I'm going to go down to my warp tool and kind of bring them in a little bit. And I can also use my eraser, which is set to soft brush. And I can erase some of the ones that go too far into my uh, porcupine body shape. I wanna take a look and see if I have the effect that I want. Um, I'm going to also, I'm going to merge all the quills, but I'm going to also add some at the bottom here. And I think I need a little bit more at the top too. It feels like it's missing a little something. Okay. Just gonna erase this little that's bothering me a little bit okay so I have my cute little guy the quills I'm actually this it's so important that this layer is separate that I'm gonna rename it quills just so we remember not to combine it okay so now I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna draw my heart and if you want a super smooth heart, you can change your brush. You can use the hard airbrush if you are in um, Procreate under airbrush. If you're using only uh, Procreate brushes under airbrushing, the hard airbrush is at the bottom. And we can set it to a smaller size. making a very simple heart and of course I'm going to erase where the arms are so here's our basic sketch and now here comes the fun part it's time to color a little bit to replace our sketch with the color palette also I went ahead and colored in the heart using the hard airbrush and I did some reflective work with white using the airbrush as well. I also did a very base layer of the porcupine and there is really no need to do that if you're using a white background. 
the only reason I did it is because I did not want him to be transparent later because we're going to be making a nice, vibrant, bright background. So now I would like to add some textury grain to the little guy. I love using grain when I'm drawing critters. So I'm going to make a layer above my critter. And Procreate doesn't have a ton of grainy brushes, but they do have one that I love. It's in the materials section of the brush library, and it's called the noise brush. And if you turn your noise brush like up very high, what we're going to do... Oops, I turned off the wrong layer. I want to show you. I'm going to turn off some layers so I can show you what we're going to do. We're going to bring it in a U-shape kind of a configuration, pressing down more on the right side and the bottom to get a darker, part, a darker edge along the right and bottom because I'm pretending that my light source is at my top left. So that's how we're coloring this little guy. So I'll take that little demonstration away, put my layer back, bring my guys all back to where they were. And let's start with our noise brush. Just as I was saying before, going much darker on the bottom and the right. And not back and forth, but more of like a U. So a lot of the light is going to fall toward the middle and toward, of course, the top left. So I'm pretty happy with that for now. I am going to use my arrow button to bring some of this in more towards the the sketch though because some of my grain got away from me so I have it on free form and I'm kind of just moving it more inside my sketch okay it's in the description you'll have access to this free bunch of goodies there is no need to provide an email address no need to like or subscribe it's just some free goodies there will be a color palette a sketch that we're working on today. Actually, you can draw this sketch with me. Also, a free Procreate shader brush, as well as some watercolor paper. So I've loaded the watercolor paper into Procreate already, and I also loaded up a little reference porcupine for us. When you load your watercolor paper, make that your top layer and set it to multiply, so all the layers underneath will let those little wonderful details show through. So let's begin. I'm gonna start using the little pine brush for sketching. It's in the drawing section of your Procreate brush library. And just to start sketching, you can use um, a darker color. I have like a dark brown. It's not on our color palette. I just, just like to have the sketch a little bit darker. Now I'm gonna be making kind of like a rounded potato shape. <laughs> and it does not have to be perfect. Um, now we're gonna kind of make little ears at the top of our porcupine. Kind of just make them almost in the same shape as our potato body. And at the bottom, making similarly shaped feet. And in the middle, toward the middle, a little bit longer, but similarly shaped stubby arms. I actually think that these arms are too high up that I made. So I can either erase and redraw them, or I can go up to my selection tool and bring them down a little bit further apart. So I'll do that. I'll be lazy and I'll do that. <laughs> now I'll go make a new layer above that and I'm going to make a little reference for myself. This will be um, taken away later. And I'm just drawing the bottom of where I think my face would be 
and the middle of where I think my face would be. I'm just making that quick reference layer and I'll even bring the opacity on that down and clicking above that to make the actual face. So my eyes, I want to remember to keep them wide spaced and low because that is a good way to ensure that my porcupine is cute. Big, wide spaced, low eyes are a cute little feature on animals. And for the nose, I'm just kind of like gonna sketch a little bit of a mound here and the same kind of mound uh, inversed on the bottom and a little itty bitty oval in the middle. I'll go back to my ears and make kind of like almost the exact same shape, but smaller on the inside. Now, when I go to do my quills, I most definitely need to keep them on a separate layer. And I will show you why later, but that is very important. So even when we merge all of our porcupine features together, I'm gonna keep the quills on a separate layer. Um, so now I'm gonna take away the reference layer completely. And going back to the eyes and nose, I kind of think, oops, I included the ears on that too. So I'm gonna use my selection tool and just only um, circle the eyes and nose. I still kind of think they're a little bit too high. So I'm just gonna move them down a little bit. And I think that's good. I'm gonna move this eye over just a little bit. And this is of course personal preference. So right now it does look like a bear because it doesn't have quills and we will fix that. Um, so let's go ahead and merge the layers we have that are um, our porcupine. And now I'm gonna kind of um, minimize the shape, bring it down a little bit, give me a little more room for the quills. But as I said earlier, I'm going to make a new layer for the quills. If you hear snoring, that's my Boston Terrier. <laughs> so forgive me for that. She's, she makes so much noise all the time. Okay, the quills are gonna be so simple to make. They're just gonna be little lines that I'm still on my um, little pine brush. I'm just gonna draw lines coming from the uh, potato shaped body and out as far as I want. And it doesn't have to take a long time because we can copy this, uh, this quill layer and we can paste it to the other side. So it, if you only wanted to do, for instance, like a quarter of this, you could stop here and then just copy and paste the others. But I think I want um, not to have that, it, that so much symmetry so I'm going to do about half of uh, my porcupine of the quills. And even after I add color, I'm still going to keep these quills separate on a separate layer until the very, very, very end. Okay, a um, little more here. So as I said before, I'll copy the quill layer, duplicate, going to my arrow selection button, and at the bottom, you can flip it. I'm flipping horizontally and dragging it over. Now, obviously, it's not symmetrical because <laughs> those quills are way off of the, off of the uh, porcupine's body, so I'm going to go down to my warp tool and kind of bring them in a little bit. And I can also use my eraser, which is set to soft brush. And I can erase some of the ones that go too far 
into my uh, porcupine body shape. I want to take a look and see if I have the effect that I want. Um, I'm going to also, I'm going to merge all the quills, but I'm going to also add some at the bottom here. And I think I need a little bit more at the top too. It feels like it's missing a little something. Okay. Just going to erase this little, that's bothering me a little bit. Okay, so I have my cute little guy. The quills, I'm actually this, it's so important that this layer is separate that I'm going to rename it quills just so we remember not to combine it. Okay, so now I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to draw my heart. And if you want a super smooth heart, you can change your brush. You can use the hard airbrush if you are in um, Procreate under airbrush. If you're using only uh, Procreate brushes under airbrushing, the hard airbrush is at the bottom. And we can set it to a smaller size. making a very simple heart and of course I'm going to erase where the arms are so here's our basic sketch and now here comes the fun part it's time to color a little bit to replace our sketch with the color palette also I went ahead and colored in the heart using the hard airbrush and I did some reflective work with white using the airbrush as well. I also did a very base layer of the porcupine. And there is really no need to do that if you're using a white background. The only reason I did it is because I did not want him to be transparent later. Because we're going to be making a nice, vibrant, bright background. So... Now I would like to add some textury grain to the little guy. I love using grain when I'm drawing critters. So I'm gonna make a layer above my critter. And Procreate doesn't have a ton of grainy brushes, but they do have one that I love. It's in the materials section of the brush library and it's called the noise brush. And if you turn your noise brush like up very high, what we're gonna do Oops, I turned off the wrong layer. I wanna show you, I'm gonna turn off some layers so I can show you what we're gonna do. We're going to bring it in a U-shape kind of a configuration, pressing down more on the right side and the bottom to get a darker, part, a darker edge along the right and bottom because I'm pretending that my light source is at my top left. So that's how we're coloring this little guy. So I'll take that little demonstration away, put my layer back, bring my guys all back to where they were. And let's start with our noise brush. Just as I was saying before, going much darker on the bottom and the right. And not back and forth, but more of like a U. So a lot of the light is going to fall toward the middle and toward, of course, the top left. So I'm pretty happy with that for now. I am going to use my arrow button to bring some of this in more towards the the sketch though because some of my grain got away from me so I have it on free form and I'm kind of just moving it more inside my sketch okay I have this nice pink color and I'll 
focus in on the ears. I'm going to bring down the size and opacity because I want it to be very subtle. And I'm just going to do a little bit. Remember keeping in mind where my light source is, top left. And I also want to bring a little bit under the cheeks too. I think that looks cute and sweet. So to be quite honest, I think that's just um, a little bit too small for the cheeks, so I'm going to hit the back button and increase the size to do the cheeks and try again with a little bit more round strokes, rounded strokes this time. Okay, I like that better. Gonna turn down the opacity a little bit though. Okay, now we can decide about the quills. We had left them on a separate layer and the reason is after you color it, you can make a decision about whether or not you want more uh, quills or longer quills or thicker quills. And it's a harder decision to make before you color your piece. So I think that just duplicating the layer that I just did, and as I duplicated the layer with the quills, I think that looks pretty nice. But I'm going to take one of the duplicated layers. I'm going to use the arrow tool and maybe just turn it a little bit to see how I like that. Rotate it just a tiny bit. See if if I like that look and maybe also as I showed you before warp it and I think I like that if you want you can also lengthen the quills but I think I like just the the thicker look it doesn't have to be that much longer so I'm happy with that so I'm just gonna blend everything together including all the shading and the drawing, the only thing I'm not um, merging onto the same layer is, of course, the color palette. And for now, I'm going to turn off this layer and add a new layer because I'd like to focus on background. My collection of storybook brushes has some instant background brushes, including Magic Smoke. Uh, we have... The Splatter Cloud, which is a fun one too. A Whimsy Fun Shader. This one's actually included for free in the description and it has some transparency so you can build up the color. Also, um, Starry Clouds. This is fun for like a night sky. Or even in a daytime sky. And um, Magic Nebula, I like the, the nebula with no background, like a spooky kind of like brings an eerie light to your stories. But for the purpose of this little porcupine guy, I think I like best um, within the storybook collection. I think I would like something spongy um, like the Mud Puddles brush. So I think I'm going to use that to show you a demonstration of, because this one has like, it's going to leave a nice ragged, non-perfect edge, and it brings in a couple of different colors. And that's, to me, like, to my eye, very pleasing. And then for the bottom, let's see how I like that me for like a grassy look. So let's see how our guy looks on this background. Very happy. He looks happy there. <laughs> of course, we need to draw in some shading where he is. Now, if you have um, Procreate brushes only and you'd like to stay with those, I have some good substitutions for a background I found. 
I really like the sticks brush and the Marilla brush. And those brushes would be found under, I think it's drawing. Yep, drawing. So let's start with the sticks brush and we can, um, I'll show you what that one looks like. So let's go ahead and add another layer and bring in some of that teal color. This is the sticks brush from Procreate. And I'm just gonna kind of draw in different directions to try to give that nice abstracty edge all over. And then if you're only using Procreate brushes, you can grab the green from the color palette and go to the Marilla brush. And that one is a little more organic, I think. And I think that one looks like more like a grassy look. So let's bring our little guy we're going to have to layer him over. So that looks pretty good too. So just placing that a little bit more, kind of like a more concisely around him. I'm going to get rid of the color palette now. And all I really want to focus on now are some little details. I want to shade the porcupine shadow onto the grass. And I want to put some details into the sky because I do think that um, it still looks a little plain there. So let me get my porcupine guy. And um, I'm going to go to the grass layer and use the selection button. And if you remember my light source is coming from the top left, I'm going to kind of make a selection to the right of the porcupine. And now I'm going to come up to the adjustments and bring down my brightness a little bit. Let's see. I think that looks pretty good. And I want to do the same thing, but opposite up above here. Grab my... Um, same tool and I'm just going to brighten it just a little bit tiny tiny little bit barely perceptible okay so we're almost there but I'm not loving the brightness that I put there I don't think it's obvious enough and I also would like to add some little details around. Of course if I'm going to use my storybook brush set I've got little tricks I can use to add the details. I've got stars and little um, accents. Just to make it a little more interesting. If I'm sticking with Procreate brushes, I will have to find one that does that, maybe one of the luminance brushes. Like, let's see what a glimmer would look like if I tried. So glimmer would work too. I just have to like use it a little bit sparingly. And that's in the, and the luminance, under the luminance in the Procreate brush selection. So I think we're done. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.